7.44 says suppose that a 95% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 is calculated to be uh, 1.4 to 6.7. If we test the null hypothesis, uh, mu1 minus t mu2 equals 0 versus the alternative, I think there's a typo in the book, that mu1 minus mu2 does not equal 0 using alpha equal to 0.5, will we reject H0? Why or why not? And the answer is yes, we reject H0. Okay, and the simple reason, okay, the reason is um, if the confidence interval, confidence interval does not contain 0, not contain 0, um, then uh, we are at least 95% confident that there is a difference between mu1 and mu2. Okay. So just for that, um, that's one of the things. So. If we're 95% confident that it's in between 1.4 and 6.7, that means we're confident that mu1 is bigger than mu2. That different, it might be bigger only by 1.4, or it might be bigger by as much as 6.7. But we're at least 95% we're 95% confident that it's um, bigger than mu2 by uh, some value in this range, which means that in our, our null. Um, our null hypothesis saying that there is no difference is going to be rejected. Okay, and if uh, if you're having trouble thinking about this, you can think that if the null hypothesis were true, if the H naught were true, then all of our differences would be centered around zero, and we would rarely um, uh, we would only reject something if it falls outside of this range, okay? Outside of this, uh, in our tails here, and there's a 0.025 chance of being in the tails, okay? Likewise, when we created a 95% confidence interval, what we ended up observing is we observed some true difference, okay, of y bar 1 minus y bar 2 to be some, some value here, Yet, what we, when we created a confidence interval, that 95% confidence interval does not include 0. It goes from 1.4 uh, to 6.7. So the probability of us um, observing something out here is going to be less than um, the 5% necessary here.